All right, guys. I've been sitting home for 10 days for the holidays with uh, nowhere to fish, nothing to do. And uh, naturally, I watched a lot of YouTube from my favorite channels. And because I watch a lot of catfish videos, the topic of circle hooks pops up all the time and I hear the same things over and over again and some of them just don't make sense to me. Yes, I am not an expert on circle hooks, but for some of these things, you don't need to be an expert to see that they just don't make sense. And uh, let's start with something uh, really silly. Circle hooks hook themselves, suggesting that uh, circle hooks hold some kind of advantage over traditional J hooks. If I had a dollar every time I saw someone say that on video, how can this possibly be true? How can a piece of metal actually do something, anything? Think about what this really means. Here is a hook sitting on the table. Without external force, this hook cannot hook itself to anything. As a matter of fact, it cannot do anything at all. And as long as nobody touches it, it will keep being right here till the end of time. A hook is an object with no conscience and no source of energy, which makes it physically incapable of doing stuff like hooking itself to fish. People can do things, animals can do things, but hooks cannot do things. They can just be there. And if a fish swallows a circle hook, the hook cannot and will not do anything. And here you will say, well, Victor, you're hanging a straw man there when you interpret this literally. Obviously, this is just a figure of speech and what people mean is that the fish will hook itself without the angler setting the hook. Now, this sounds much better and actually appears to be quite acceptable. And uh, it seems to have strong reinforcement from our personal experience because we have all left the rod on the rod holder and later we find the fish hooked on it. But now there is something else that bothers me. If it is the fish that is carrying the action of driving the hook inside, then why is credit given to the circle hooks? I can leave my rod in the rod holder with a J hook at the end and if a fish swallows the hook and pulls against the rod, it will drive the J-hook inside just as well. And in some cases, the J-hook will grab where the circle hook would slip. I don't see any kind of advantage for the circle hooks as people seem to suggest. Let's look at all possible places where a hook can penetrate the fish. I'm gonna split all possible scenarios into these groups. The stomach, the throat or the gills, the edge or the lip of the mouth, uh, and external or snags. Let's go through this quickly and see which hook is more likely to get set there and then estimate the overall hooking advantage. The stomach. The circle hook was designed to slip here and generally it does and hookups here are not common. The J-hook, however, will penetrate the soft stomach tissue extremely easy and because the tip is sticking out, this is extremely likely to happen. So, as far as the stomach is concerned, the J-hook has a strong advantage in the probability of catching the fish. The throat or the gills. Everything that was said about the stomach is exactly the same here, so there is no point of repeating it. Again, the J-hook has a strong advantage in terms of the probability of catching the fish. And then we have the edge of the catfish mouth where the tiny teeth form something like a lip. Which hook has a better probability of getting set here? The J-hook or the circle hook? Well, I'm gonna make the case that even though the entire design of the circle hook was created so the hook will set here, and the design works really well, the J-hook still has an advantage and is more likely to grab hold here. In a perfect scenario, when the circle hook reaches the edge of the mouth, it will keep sliding and rotating until finally the edge of the mouth enters the gap between the tip of the hook and the stem and the tip can finally grab onto something. 
but what if the hook rotates around the outside of the stem? Then the tip will never get a chance to grab. And this is part of the reason why we lose so many fish with circle hooks even after a violent takedown. There are some things you can do to improve the odds of the hook facing the right way, but these are not a concern for this video. There is one more scenario however, where it doesn't even matter which way the circle hook is facing, and it comes from the fact that the circle hook needs to rotate before it can get set. That's the scenario where the catfish swallows the bait and then backs up in reverse. Now the hook is being pulled only forward and will not rotate around the edge and that will make it impossible for the tip to touch the lip. In this scenario the hook will exit the mouth safely for the fish regardless of which way the tip was facing. I know that's quite an impossible scenario when it comes to blue catfish because they just don't do that, they don't swallow and back up. Uh, they are not suspicious and the way they bite is more like a train hitting a Ford Fiesta. But the flatheads are a different story. A big flathead can live in a hole under the bank or right under a tree and for them it's quite possible to move forward, grab a bait and then back up in reverse into their little cave. On top of that, the flatheads are more intelligent and suspicious and are known to take the bait slowly and carefully. If they detect something is wrong, they will eject the bait and again the hook will not get a chance to rotate. This is why the flatheads are notorious for being tricky to catch with circle hooks. But anyway, my goal here was to show you some scenarios where the circle hook will slip when exiting the mouth of the fish. If we examine how the J-hook works in the same scenario, exiting the mouth of the fish, we see that it simply doesn't matter which way the tip is facing because the tip is exposed and will grab either side of the mouth just the same. It also doesn't matter if the fish backs up after it grabs the bait because the hook doesn't need to rotate and will grab the lip anyway. So even if we only look at the edge of the mouth and see which hook is less likely to slip, the J-hook actually has an advantage. And the last comparison that we need to do, which is not important but I just want to cover all the bases, is hooking the fish on the outside by snagging it. Here of course it is just impossible for a circle hook to grab hold, which is why you don't see many people trying to snag paddle fish with treble circle hooks. So once again the J-hook holds an advantage in the probability of getting set in the fish. And to summarize everything so far and put an end to these fallacies, let me say this out loud. No, the circle hooks do not set themselves and they have no advantage in terms of the probability of hooking the fish over the traditional J-hooks. At this point I'm sure I've ruffled a few feathers and someone is probably coming with counter arguments. And uh, even if you agree with what I've said so far, I bet you still resent the fact that I make it look like the circle hooks are somehow inferior. So let me say this clearly. The circle hook is not inferior. The circle hook is a brilliant and noble design that is unfortunately sometimes misunderstood in the catfish community. Let me go over one more misconception to show you what I mean. Are you ready? Here it is. Offsetting circle hooks improves your hook up rate. The first half of this video was about people thinking that circle hooks can somehow hook themselves or that uh, they catch more fish than traditional J hooks, both of which are silly but it kind of doesn't matter. This one however really bothers me and I think it just needs to be confronted and erased from application. Let's see what the problem is here. Well, to begin with, the statement that offsetting hooks improves uh, the hookup rate is 100% true. Not only that, but the actual improvement is proportional to how much you offset the tip of the hook. And if you're not confused by now, you must have misunderstood something I said. Then how can this be misconception if it's true? Well, because it doesn't make any sense at all. Why are these hooks called circle? 
because the tip of the hook is bent inside so it's facing its own stem usually under a 90 degree or something close to that but why did they have to do that why did they have to bend the tip what is the difference and the difference is that if we don't bend the tip the tip will catch the fish the whole point of bending the tip inside is so we don't catch the fish. The whole purpose of this design was to protect the health of the fish and avoid hooking the internal organs. This is what makes it noble. And the way everything was achieved with such simplicity is just nothing short of brilliant. Now that the stem is in front of the tip, it is providing a protective barrier for the sharp tip and allows the hook to safely slide out of the critical organs of the fish. But then it reaches the edge of the mouth and it starts to rotate on the way out and all of a sudden the lip slides between the tip and the stem and the hook is now set in the strongest point when it comes to tearing which also happens to be the safest point for the fish. How can you describe this with anything but brilliant? Now let's see what happens when you offset the hook. Well, now the stem is no longer in front of the tip of the hook and therefore no longer able to act as a barrier and protect the internal organs of the fish. Now it becomes very easy for the sharp tip to enter the soft tissue of the stomach and you directly negated the entire purpose of the design of this hook. Which really begs the question, why do you even use circle hooks then? Someone bend the tip inside to face the stem and you bend it back out. Why don't you just get a J hook and stop messing with the pliers? Because offsetting a circle hook makes as much sense as taking a sleeping pill and then drinking a cup of coffee. Let me tell you a true story from my last trip to the catfish conference. One of the vendors there was showing me a wall full of stuff and I told him just show me the most important new product. And he grabbed a pack of hooks and said here we listened to the feedback and our most popular circle hook is now available with offset. To which I replied this makes zero f sense. And he just exploded in laughter and said but this is what they want and kept laughing. And I said, why would you offset a circle hook when the whole point of the design is to avoid, and he finished my line, gut hooking the fish. So on that day I found that manufacturers are aware that offsetting circle hooks is wrong, but they still make them. Because their job is not to teach you what is right and what is wrong, and what hooks you should and should not use. Their job is to give people what they want, and people have been wanting offset circle hooks. And this is why understanding the design and the true purpose of the circle hooks is so important. I know some of these people who offset hooks. They are incredible anglers and great people and they genuinely care about the health and preservation of trophic catfish. And they still do this. This misunderstanding has gone too far and manufacturers are now starting to produce product that has no reasons to exist. If you care about the fish, use a normal circle hook. If you want to catch some eaters, use J hooks. The saddest thing is to see people who care about the fish use offset circle hooks or J hooks. You know, fortunately, offsetting circle hooks is not very popular outside of the catfish world. In saltwater fishing, offset circle hooks are generally frowned upon and uh, in some tournaments they're actually banned. Do me a favor and next time you browse a fishing catalog look for the label tournament approved on some of these uh, circle hooks. Those are not special hooks. All that this label means is that this is not a stainless steel hook so it can rust if it stays in the mouth of the fish and that it's not offset so it's not gonna gut hook the fish. Every normal circle hook is tournament approved. Guys, the circle hooks have other advantages, like being able to catch a muskie with 10 pound mono because you know the teeth will never touch the line. But I don't want to talk about this in this video. 
I want to keep the focus of this video on the issues I already discussed because for me they are more important and they have been misunderstood for a long time. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna end this video here. Listen, if you feel the same way I feel about saving the lives of trophy catfish, do me a favor and share this video on social media. Also give it a like so YouTube will show it to more people. And as always, thanks for spending time on my channel and please feel invited to share your opinions in the comments below. Kai Fines.